lives of the gay and lesbian population of Alabama an easier and better place to save and secure and make a safe place and a safe heaven in as many cities as possible across our state for all of our LGBT youth who live their lives in persecution. Ladies and gentlemen, from the statewide organization of Free to Be, please welcome director and founder, Mr. James Robinson. You'll have to start it, honey. Good morning, everyone. I heard that they're in closing arguments inside. Is that right, Cleet? Yeah. I am very honored to be here. I want to thank Miss Ambrosia Starling and Montgomery Pride United, especially for all the work they have done making this possible and for all the other organizations across the state that have contributed. Seven years ago, I started my work in this state when I created what is now Free to Be. And over those years, I have had the privilege of watching organizations and groups pop up across the state of Alabama. When we started, Central Alabama Pride was in existence. BAO was in existence. Uh, Mobile Pride had operated some. PFLAG groups are all over the state. Now, in addition to those, we have Wiregrass Equality, Shoals Pride Fest, the Athens Pride Coalition, Montgomery Pride United has started. Uh, don't let me forget anybody here. A powerhouse has joined us, and Free to Be HRC has come into Alabama during those years. Free to Be has opened offices in Huntsville and Birmingham, and by November we will have offices in Montgomery. In Montgomery, we're collaborating with Montgomery Pride United, and in Mobile, we're opening an office where we already have a youth group, and we're collaborating with Equality Alabama. In November, we also open groups for youth in Dothan and Athens, and in Athens, it's the other group, we're collaborating with the Athens Pride Coalition. So we now have groups all over the state, and we want to keep working together. This is the first time, I believe, in our history. The Magic City Sisters are here, and we partnered with them, that we have come together as a community from across the state of Alabama. And what do we say today? No more! No more! No more! No more! Back in January, we were here. It was a sunny day, but it was cold. How many of you were here with us then? We also had a gentleman named Tom Willett who was sitting up here as a notary. Tom notarized dozens of the official ethics complaints that are now causing what is happening inside this building. Tom unfortunately passed away, but Tom is in heaven watching us today and smiling. And let's give Tom a big round of no more! No more! No more! No more! Vincent Rutherford who is usually everywhere with Free to Be, is having back surgery Friday, and it broke his heart that he could not be here. He's with us watching, live streaming, and getting all the messages. Let's give a no more to all the people who want to be here but can't, the thousands of them across this country. No more! No more! No more! On Saturdays with Cleet Wetley, I co-host All This Left Radio, and I am on that show. I'm Judge James, and I want to preface this, preface this with, I am Liberal Radio's most respected pretend judge. I have no legal uh, law degree or anything, but this past Saturday, Judge James made a ruling. He made the first judge to rule on what's happening in this building, and I want to share with you some of his ruling. As we all know, this isn't the first time that Judge Moore has run afoul of the law. Remember, he was removed from office back in 2003 for his religious grandstanding when he tried to install a monument of the Ten Commandments on state property. So, after his failed attempt to run for governor in 2010, Moore continued to try to mix his own brand of religious zealotry with governance. After his swearing in in 2013, he insisted that freedom of religion applies only to the God of the Christian Bible, and therefore the protections of the Establishment Clause do not extend to other religions, such as Islam and Buddhism. He has said that he 
defines homosexuality abhorrent, immoral, and detestable, and even ruled to remove parental custody from a mother of three because of her sexual orientation. In this case before us today, more clearly violated the law in telling state judges to ignore a higher court's order to issue and recognize same-sex marriages. Also, Moore's many public comments are a clear violation of judicial ethics as he has used his office to make loud and clearly politically partisan statements. Roy Moore's dangerous brand of religious extremism is exactly why we have a judicial code of ethics and he needs to be removed from the bench immediately before he causes more damage to the state of Alabama. So I, Judge James, Liberal Radio's most respected pretend judge, rule that Roy Moore is a clear and present danger to equality in Alabama and that he is guilty of violating judicial ethics. We are still tabulating how many charges, but every time he speaks we have to add another count of bigotry, homophobia, or religious zealotry. He should be removed from office, barred from practicing law, and placed in a rural senior center where he can spend the rest of his days playing illegal bingo on Wednesday nights or watching Matlock reruns. His bigotry and offensive religious extremism is a disgrace to our justice system. It's been said that when fascism, the alt-right, comes to America, it will be wrapped in the flag and carried across. And Roy Moore has shown repeatedly that he wants to destroy our democracy in favor of a theocracy based on his misguided interpretation of the Bible. People like Roy Moore are exactly why we have a constitution that protects the rights of every citizen. No more! No more! No more! No more! No more! Thank you! Thank you for being here! Before James takes off, I want to especially thank him because this is the gentleman who took care of the permit for us to be here. He also paid for the parking spaces so that we have space to be here without being harassed. So a big thank you to James Robinson. Thank you for everything you do. And thank you, Meta. I had not met Miss Ambrosia Starling until January. And knowing her, we started the campaign. Hashtag Ambrosia Starling for governor. I hope you're still considering it, Miss Ambrosia. I've been able to meet Meta and the great people at Montgomery Pride United. And Frida B is so excited to be coming to Montgomery and Mobile. And anyone in this state who wants to collaborate with us as we work to end violence while advocating for the human and civil rights of sexual and gender minorities, please get on board the train. And one further note, the mayor of Montgomery is working with us to help us find a community center. Yay! I was just sent a listing of the buildings available through the tax sales, so I need help in looking for something that will be perfect for all of us here. And we'll help you all do the same thing in your areas. And Frida B is collaborating by taking our federal grant money from the Victims of Crime Act that we use to fight violence in the state of Alabama to work with Montgomery Pride United to get that center open. Thank you all. Connecting. I recorded it here and Christiane got your video too, so I'll post it for you. You might want to check it, it may still be going, bro. It may still be recording. I don't know what I did. <laughs> okay. We we run a two man show now. That helps. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not used to using an electric microphone with a wire. 
Um, actually, I'm not used to using the electric anything. Um, right here, right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome to the stage a lovely young lady in the spirit of, in the spirit of the Lord, Mandy Goheen. Y'all give her a lovely round of applause, please. Good morning, afternoon, just about afternoon. My name is Mandy Goheen, and I'm a candidate for ministry in the Unitarian Universalist tradition. And my tradition is love. Woo! Love is justice. Love is what justice looks like in public. I'm a straight ally. I'm a military spouse. I'm the mother of six children who I chose not to bring here today because I don't think this is appropriate. My kids are at home or at school today. I want to raise them in a space that they are free to marry whoever they fall in love with when they grow up. My straight values don't determine their future. I'm not hiding behind the, the Bible to determine who I can and cannot love because I know God is love. And that's what I am meant to do is love everyone. Equally. Judge Moore, don't you tell me who I can or cannot marry as clergy. Do not violate my religious liberties. Do not tell my children who they can marry lovingly when they grow up. And do not disrespect the fact that our family has served the military beside my husband for 19 years. And we are straight allies and we are strong with Alabama. And this is where change will happen.